the center of the anime universe in some suburb in Texas. Yes. <laughs> this is the fantranslation.org podcast. And my name is David Went, and this is Joe Leone, and yep. we I will have these names on a video description or something. I don't know. So, uh, with tonight being yet another actually pretty decent tsunami. Yeah. I, they, I, 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 for those who of whom who have been living under a rock since 2008, and that's a very specific year. Yes, tsunami is back. Uh, well, if they were living under a rock, tsunami, tsunami never went away. No, they, they, <laughs> they could tell because in the last year of tsunami, it was uh, completely f***ing empty. Yeah, it was. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's good. It's good that it's back. Mm-hmm, definitely. So, uh, uh, what do you want to... So, uh, first, I, 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 one thing before I begin, one, one of the things I wanted to talk about is the, uh, <sighs> what our fantasy Toonami lineups would be if we controlled every single segment of the animation industry and we could put whatever we wanted on there. So if we controlled Funimation... Well, well, I'm getting to that. Because, uh, <laughs> one of the things we have to keep in mind, though, is that the uh, animation industry is uh, kind of uh, a giant smoldering crater, at, at least as far as anime licensing is concerned. Basically, the reason that you know, it happened around the, the fall of Toonami was like the fallout of the entire industry. No, that actually caused the fall of Toonami. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it, it, no, it I happened mean, as a result of the fall of the Steve, industry. Steve Tunami Blum actually kinda... pretty much said they ran out of content. And it's kind of obvious, because all they had was Naruto. They ran out of good content. All of it, <laughs> all they had was Naruto, and it was filler era in Naruto. And so they had Naruto, and they had a bunch of, uh, basically, uh, I'm going to unhook this. Because it's echoing back in. Oh, it is? Uh, I uh, can hear it over there. I don't know if it's actually picking up, but I can hear it over there, so I don't want to hear it over there. So, basically what happens is, uh, 2000 on, you have Dragon Ball Z, Tom 1.0 era, it's, everything's great, uh, there's this huge animation boom, because you all have all these people who's now saying, oh, there's actually good cartoons that aren't targeted towards Look kids. Look at this Japanimation thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, around, uh, it, shortly ap thereafter, they create Adult Swim, and they cannibalize what was originally Toonami's Midnight Run into anime, surrounded by a bunch of acquisitions from Fox, which were canceled in the past, and they pretty much saved a lot of shows from uh, being canceled. But uh, what this really did is that it's kind of created a big licensing boom from like 2002 to 2006. It was like everything was getting licensed. Well, maybe not everything, but a lot of stuff was and a lot of companies were created. Now, what happens is, uh, if you notice, before this was, uh, before this big licensing boom, pretty much the only home of broadcast anime was... Uh, Saturday morning cartoons where they cut everything down and all be distributed by four kids. Four kids, yeah. Yeah, four kids. The the Pokemon. The, 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 the thing is, Pokemon was already a, a children's series to begin with. That was something they should have licensed because they were licensing for children's series. Yeah. Then then they picked up Yu-Gi-Oh! And they that was a big boom because of the fact that it was this big... Uh, it was already had a mer uh, merchandising. I mean, all of the big the entire morning cards. series was based around merchandising these cards. Well, no, not the entire series. The series we got. Because the series we got. They yes, skipped. Yes. They skipped. They skipped the, the whole pre-card thing. That yeah, that was they actually got that was actually a completely different series done by a completely different production company. So they would have have to actually they would have had to actually license it separately. Ooh, and yeah. That's why they started with uh, the Yu-Gi-Oh we got, which was uh, the second series anime. So, basically, to get back on track, uh, most of the boom was fueled by uh, relatively cut-down dubs done strictly for the children's market or Toonami. And one of the things is, uh, at the time, anime companies realized that the foreign market was actually pr profitable 
as opposed to just something that they just sold off halfway through production or worse and you, I mean, you started seeing more series on Adult Swim, like Ghost in the Cell, yeah. Standalone it's Complex. It's like Hollywood. It's like Hollywood realizing, hey, that Europe place, they like watching movies too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's uh, actually this is the same thing. So uh, what they noticed is that uh, this actually started with Hayao Miyazaki in the '90s, where he licensed, uh, I think it was Nausicaa, to some company, and they really cut it down. And he, and he actually was smart enough to look at what happened and it was a total mess and he basically said uh he basically canceled the contract and got a contract with disney and one of the contract uh, stipulations was no cuts they could not edit anything and i i think there was one thing they got approvals for in one short where they renamed balls to pouches because uh i i I, have you ever heard of uh what you you know the the tanuki in japanese mythology it's like this raccoon sort of thing yeah and one of the myths it has it has gigantically enormous testicles and (laughs) basically disney got approval for one cut which was calling them pouches uh other than that at that point it was like everyone sort of got the entire reference anyway but pretty much other than that uh uh, Disney was pretty much bound to show everything uncut. And this was actually carried into... Remember the time when Toonami pretty much marathoned all of the Miyazaki films? Yeah, I remember that. That, that was awesome! It was. But they they, they were all... I, I, I'm not sure if they were completely uncut or only most... Uh, but mo- I, I, I don't remember any significant alterations. The, the few alterations that they did were like... Well, first of all, they they cut the credits, which frankly they do Every, with everything. Ev- everyone everyone cuts the credits because it's minutes that you can dedicate to advertising. Yeah. So basically, they cut they cut the credits. They may have cut like a couple like really slow segments where the guy's just arting it out. Yeah, and uh, like there's no in, in the real movies, story. In, in the movies, Disney would often cover those up with uh, extra dialogue. Again, approved by Miyazaki because Miyazaki really cares about his art. Uh, the thing is, though, this kind of uh, contractual stipulation for approvals and no cuts didn't real wasn't really in most anime licensing until the boom, and then that's when most companies realized that they needed approvals now because while they were getting money out of America, it was also coming at the expense of their brand, where you'd have people like four kids who would license a big property like One Piece and then completely trash it. Bullshit, butcher it, yeah. No, no. here's the thing. One Piece is gigantically huge in Japan. It could have been huge in America if they targeted it towards the right audience. I mean, seriously, it has everything everyone wants. It has pirates. It's got uh, pirates. <laughs> I actually haven't watched One Piece. I've I've watched a little bit. I've never actually caught on. I've never actually watched any of it during a jump on point. So to tell you the truth, none of it made sense to me at all. Like it's, I knew I recognized some of the characters long. that people rant rant about, but it's too long now. But basically, yeah, they're gonna crucify us. But basically, for this one for uh, we didn't see it. The the consequence of this increased emphasis on a more uh, faithful dubbing was that uh, licensees couldn't really sell to children anymore. And we're still kind of in the animation age ghetto where everything above... We're above the age of 12 and people are like, you're still watching cartoons? Yeah, which, well, which, which is it, my dad a, still says those Japanese cartoons. And I'm like, you know the demographic for this, right? It's it's it, for like have they college seen students. Funima- have they seen what comes out of Funimation nowadays? It's if well, it doesn't well, have fan to, service, to, they don't advertise to, it. To be honest, I don't want my parents to see what Funimation is showing on their website. <laughs> Good. Also, don't show them this podcast. No. Okay. So basically, uh, what's ha- what's happening is uh. So if you think about your your tsunami, you're aiming for a. a early teen, uh, maybe uh, old, uh, late child age demographic where you can have these complex, long-running cartoons, but you don't really have the license to have all of the... Well, cursing isn't that bad, because 
apparently the Japanese language doesn't have that much in the way of explicitives. No. Uh, you act, Actually, as a localizer, from what I've heard, you have really, really uh, wide range yeah, where you, you can take I, it. Yeah, I've noticed in a lot of shows, like, I... A lot, a lot of shows, if like the sub, between the sub and the dub, if it's a toss up and if mm-hmm. it's a short enough series, I'll watch them both just to see the difference. And a lot of times, the curse words between like the guy who wrote the subs and the guy who, di- who wrote the script for the dubs, the curse words are entirely different simply because I, it, it, there's not much to choose from in the Japanese language. I, I think there's only one, but basic. I, I, I know someone called me out on on it in the in the comments or something. But basically, uh, 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 oh, oh yeah, uh, wait, wait a second. When you say sub and dub, do you mean sub as in the unlicensed fan subs or, like, the official subs on Ofi- the disc? Official subs. Like, oh. official subs, there are differences. Well, well, the official subs and the official dubs are always going to be different because despite the fact that most anime doesn't, doesn't do very good, uh, voice, uh, voice flaps well, but you still have to match at least the count of flaps. Because if it's otherwise, you get lines that are way too long, make it look make, or too short. Make, it has to match the syllables. To actually, I I I, I think or get close. I, I think some video, some early video games that had voice acting had that problem. Like yeah. I think FFX, and that's actually one of the big things people complain about with Final Fantasy X is the voice acting is bad and it doesn't match the lip flaps. It's good to be past the uncanny valley, isn't it? Mm-hmm. The Uncanny Valley, now with more bad voice acting. Yeah, But the bad voice acting matches the characters now, so it's okay. No, it's not. <laughs> it's not. It's so so basically, uh, with this, we have... have uh, Toonami now has a dearth of content because... Well, there's a dearth of the content for their particular demographic, which they're targeting... And then uh, Toonami got... No, first Meguzi got cancelled because that was supposed to be the replacement Toonami because they moved Toonami to Saturdays and cancelled Saturday Video Entertainment System in the process. Hmm. Uh, and then uh, they, they cancelled Meguzi, then they cancelled Toonami, and that was back when Toonami pretty much had nothing to watch anymore, and I stopped watching it long before it actually got cancelled. So Pretty much the same, yeah. When, 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 when the adult... Swim pulled the April Fool's j- uh, thing. I was like, wait a second, Toonami got canceled? <laughs> it shows how much of a good fan I am. But basically, uh, then then Cartoon Network pulled CN Real. Okay, that pretty much... Um, they had... That, re- that destroyed... That destroyed their entire credibility with the demographic they've been working towards for like a decade... Because, like, this, the whole, like, young teens to, you know, just, like, from, like, 10 to, like, 15 kind of age group, where mm-hmm. th- that's really their target. And then they're looking for cartoons. It's called Cartoon Network. And then yeah. they get Cartoon Network, not really cartoons, but real CN people. CN Real. It's, uh, I, I probably the kids already, watch it and they go I've, back I've to... I've probably already gotten this podcast 10 down votes on YouTube just by mentioning CN Real. And and, and, and and that's really for a good thing because CN Real was crap. It was crap. They had a ripoff of Smash Lab, which was itself a ripoff of Mythbusters. Except without the myths and all the smash and explosions. Yeah, except that the uh, the kitty version was even worse. To say like, the truth, I watched like, Destroy, Build, Destroy simply because of Andrew WK and him <laughs> screaming the entire time. I didn't even watch CN Real, so I don't know which one of the co- shows. It was, it was basically a show where, like, have you ever watched uh, Junkyard Wars, the British show? Uh, I watched it when it was on TLC. I don't know if that was a British or an American. They, they had an American adaptation. It wasn't as good. Uh, I think everything's better with a British wasn't accent. It, wasn't but... the British version called Scrap Heap Challenge? I think they changed it once they got the American adaptation. They wanted to sync them up. Because I, I, I thought the American adaptation was just a different name. I, I, I didn't know they were a completely different series because they tend to do that a lot. Like uh, most of the most of the shows that come from ABC are just BBC shows that they remake so that yeah. they have more episodes. But the, that was actually a big yeah. reason why anime didn't 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 really take off until the nineties was because they didn't have enough episodes for most series. And so you'd have people like Carl Masek who's like, hey, I'll take Robotech and I'll take these two other series and we'll call them Robotech, but I'll have to rewrite half of the half of the story to make sense between these three completely different series that I'm stitching together. And heck, even uh, Voltron was that. And 
I, I think the first Power Rangers series... Actually, one funny thing about Power Rangers is that apparently they took the American version, translated it back into Japanese, and it was more popular than the original. What? <laughs> I'm sorry, that's terrible. It's a recur it's recursive localization. It's really weird. That's like... That's like people... Like, getting all excited over Star Wars, thinking it's a new movie, only to get Do Not Want at the end of the film. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's actually where Do Not Want comes from. So, uh... So uh but, yeah, the, the show is basically... It's called Destroy, Build, Destroy. Basically, you, you get, like, two identical objects and a uh -huh. challenge. Like, you'll get two buses, and their challenge is to build a boat. And the first step is Destroy. They both get um, they get three methods of destroying. They do like a dice roll or some sort of deciding method to decide who gets to pick the first destroy method. They destroy the opponent's vehicle or bus or whatever you're using to build. Uh -huh. And then the other person gets to pick their method. And then with the rubble from the leftover, they have to build build the, the middle part. They uh -huh. build what they need to do. And then they do the challenge and then destroy again. When they, they Whoever wins second? the challenge gets to destroy the opponent's creation. But that doesn't seem to be, make any sense. Usually by Andrew W.K. screaming, destroy, and then pulling a giant plunger and making the entire thing explode with dynamite. Because mm. he loves explosions. Plus, he screamed a lot in that show. A lot. Mm. So, yeah. Uh, mm. Yeah, basically, CN Real was literally the biggest flop Cartoon Network ever had. Yeah, yeah it pretty much was. It... Now, here's the thing. The reason why they pulled the CN Real thing was, uh, uh, basically, uh, when your network execs cause a bomb scare in Boston, it's kind of an unwritten rule that they have to either resign or get killed. <laughs> but since we're in America, that pretty much leaves only resigning. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I rem it, that was a pretty bad fall. I remember that was a big thing. People were like, Oh my god, look at what cartoons do to society. Mm. And it, it, it was advertisement. It was clearly advertisement. What mm. the hell was wrong with people? It, it just it bothered me that people would even think of, like, I don't know. I guess people were still but, on that whole 9-11 craze, but here's even, the, even he, that far after. Here's the thing with the Boston Bomb Scare is that uh, it caused all of the network execs to reshuffle. And, it, and basically... The new network execs were people who really hated uh, cartoons. They believed firmly in that animation was a ghetto, and that they really wanted to have a that they would get a better periphery demographic if they had live action shows. Yeah, uh, it, it, it's kind of like uh, Coca Cola doing market testing. It says, "Hey, if we put the aspartame from Diet Coke." into regular coke and call it new coke people will like it because our market tests so show that people would like it better and then people hated it and it almost completely tanked their brand an 80 year brand to tell you the truth the ir i love the irony of this pepsi did the exact same thing it's called pepsi next and it's doing huge right now in fact it had a huge it had a huge role in uh, a certain anime series tiger and bunny which i'm sure that was that was a big yeah famous yeah they, thing they, for a while. they they called like the the sort of mutants people the next cuz it was sponsored by Pepsi Next wait was it wasn't uh code Geass sponsored by Pizza Hut or something <laughs> yes yes that was why she liked pizza and then he brought her Pizza Hut pizza it was is was... #spawn <laughs> yeah but I... I thought Pepsi Next was some sort of fictional thing, but apparently it was in other markets before the U.S. It took almost a year after that show came out in its dub form. Well, it's because of the fact for that, it to actually well, hit the U.S. They, market. They, they, they didn't. They didn't want to risk pulling another uh, 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 pe another new Coke. It, yeah. it, it's it, yeah, but they they put they played it tight to the vest, and it, it was it, it's just one of those things that like it. it for something that nearly destroyed another company, the competing brand does pretty much the same thing, but plays their advertising. They, they play advertising mm -hmm. different and tell everyone it's different. It's not Pepsi. We have a separate product called Pepsi. This is Pepsi Next. It's not going to be the, uh, the successor to Pepsi. It's just something different. It's not diet. It's not regular. It's, it's somewhere next. in the middle. It's next. I'm not sure what that means, but I've had it. It doesn't taste that bad. 
and then I look at the back of the uh, at the back of the bottle, and I don't feel bad about myself, or as bad as about myself. If I had diet Pepsi, I I wouldn't feel bad about myself until I look at the ingredients and I'd be like, oh my god, these chemicals. Phenylchloralnelaline or something. Mmm. <laughs> so yeah. Uh. So. But yes. I got you way off topic. Yeah, well, that's going to happen a lot because these things, these key things inspire topics. So our next step in the road is Cartoon Network apologizes for CN really cancel pretty much everything except Level Up, and even why is Level Up even there? I see, I've seen like maybe I saw can... like five minutes of the episode and I was like, what is this crap? I'm switching the channel. So my my intuition is that Cartoon Network's executives. They hate. They might think animation is stupid and for children, and it's not going to get them. But they also think I don't want to lose my job today. <laughs> yeah, and that's a very powerful motivator. Well, if there's anyone, uh, like look in, in terms of business, look at um, the current executive of Ford. He knows absolutely squat about cars. He was hired simply because he was a businessman, and yet look at their. Look at their company to how it was uh, back in 2008 when the economy tanked. Or Cartoon it's, Network back in 2008 when the tsunami tanked. Yeah. It, that's that's right. The global banking collapse is responsible for the end of tsunami. Oh, uh, yeah. Thanks a lot, President Bush. You canceled my anime. <laughs> uh, uh, politics aside. Um... But, yeah, the guy knew nothing about it, but he, he knew when to listen to his advisors. Mm -hmm. He knew... He, well, that, that, that's he the was best... The guy, he was the guy who was in charge of taking, get, taking all the crap cars that Ford was making for the past decade in the U.S., mm -hmm. throwing them out, and taking the good cars they made in Europe, and bringing them here. Well, that's what Suddenly, you're supposed... you have a good brand. <laughs> well, that's what you're supposed to do as a, as a high level manager or CEO. You're supposed to listen to your advisors, which is exactly what. That's a better Cartoon skill Network. than knowing. That's a better skill than knowing your product is knowing when to listen to people who know your product. Yeah, because what you're especially what you're essentially supposed to do is synchronize all the various divisions of the company. If you're a bad leader, you end up with mid '90s Apple. Yeah. Well, th I mean, get, think about like the you'll if you if you both you can't both think about uh, think about being a businessman and think about uh, your product and all that stuff because it's two separate things. It's not you you can't both think of how to market something and how to create it at the same time. Yeah. Otherwise, you get the weird scattered brain effect of what people have always described Steve Jobs as. He walks into uh, the R and D lab says. I want a big touch screen, and then walks out, leaving them all perplexed. Pretty much. Go to folklore.org if you want to know more about early 80s, app, about 80s Apple under Steve Jobs and how much of a schizophrenic train wreck it was almost. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, the dude did, he did some pretty amazing stuff to what is now considered smartphone industry. Uh, True. That was pretty much dominated by like pseudo smartphones that or were or Windows Mobile, like Windows. All that was there before uh, Apple was Windows Mobile, BlackBerry, Palm and, OS. Oh, Palm OS! It was so bad that Palm themselves started making Windows Mobile devices. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Uh, my dad had he actually one of his, his first smartphone was a Palm uh, was a Palm device running uh, Windows Mobile four. <laughs> so yeah, back on to the thing. Uh, you know, there's a there's a similar thing between uh, abandoning animation for live action that happened in Adult Swim, where originally they would play anime every day of the week, and you'd have Inuyasha, then the good shows. <laughs> uh, no offense to any Inuyasha fans, but I really didn't like it. But any uh, anyway, uh, they at first they moved anime to Saturdays. And that was when uh, I, I just, uh, Adult Swim was still decent, but I didn't bother to watch it on Saturdays. I was still watching it back when they had decent cartoons, and then they were like, you know what? Let's fill our lineup with Family Guy! No, Family Guy, and then uh, live, anim live action. Their live action stuff is... It ranges from bad to weird. Like, Tim and some, Eric, some of their stuff, show. like... like 
beyond it making no sense, it, it creeps me out. Like, I, I don't even understand some of the stuff. It's like, here's the thing. At least Robot Chicken was some form of animation. Sure, it was like uh, called Plam style checkimation. Yeah. But it... Uh... It has that, uh, you know, that short skit mentality that they it, it, it's they basically still technically a form of animation, right? And then they were went out and was like, you know what? No, we're just doing live action. And uh, so what happens after CN reels that they realize, okay, we've completely decimated our Cartoon Network brand. We've completely decimated our Adult Swim brand. Brand. Nobody's watching. I'm not watching. You're not watching. Wait, did you watch it back after 2008? No, I. It, that that was when. Pretty much 2008 marked the point where I stopped watching TV. Actually, that was the same thing with me because that's when Cablevision started pulling that we're going to pull, started pulling analog TV. Yeah, that was when the whole, when TV did that big like it was like the major shuffle over to digital. Mm -hmm. I mean, to be fair, at that point Cablevision was already digital, but they already they already had the conversion system mm -hmm. set up, and now they had to completely get rid of that to go straight digital. So all the networks are being shuffled around. Uh, high definition content used to have dedicated channels. Now they're integrated. Mm -hmm. Now you got two of the same channel. What are you gonna do? Now you you have essentially a hundred extra channels mm -hmm. for no reason. The ratings are cut into pieces. It's hard to keep track of things. So it, yeah, it, it was a big mess for cable. What happened time. to me was that basically my uh, back when we still had cable vision, we had uh, two televisions with uh, uh, I, with the interactive IO boxes and then everything else was just uh tvs with tuners connected straight into the analog tv including my computer actually i had a capture card and it was really nice because i could just watch like I, I i'd be sitting there typing on irc about whatever new thing new cartoon show capture, that i, I gotta get a new pirate i gotta get a new capture card and and i'd also be watching toonami or something uh while that was going on i remember yeah. having a capture card in the 90s and i was just like Oh, that show looks good. I press the space bar. Bam, it's recording. <laughs> and then yeah. I'm just like, I'll watch it later. Go back to doing whatever I was doing. Yeah, until you realize that half the frames dropped. Yeah, well, capture cards have never been good. Even today's capture cards are hugely buggy devices. Because they don't have decent drivers. Yeah. The, the people who... They, they take, like, a, a, a the, the stupid, shitty BT7X... X seven XX or whatever it's called, stick it in their card. Release, uh, take the uh, the st reference drivers and some standard reference uh, MS, MS development utilities. Bundle it on a disc and say, "Here you go." <sighs> I I had this old Hop Hog card, like the the Win TV. Hop, Hop Hogs are actually good because they have integrated encoders. Yeah. So it, you don't it, drop frames. It was actually very good at the time. Uh, the big thing was... They're good, but they're expensive, even today. I have one from the 90s. I looked at its eBay price. It's still like 50 bucks. The card's ancient. It's mm -hmm. totally outdated, but it still could sell for 50 bucks. But yeah, I don't know how. The main reason why I stopped watching Cartoon Network was basically because I didn't have a television that I could use to watch television. And it to was, be fair, it wasn't like... Because of the content... You weren't willing to go out of your way to try and get that content. You were like, oh, now it's a little bit difficult. I even oh, well, it's I even not like stopped, I'm missing anything. I even stopped pirating the content. Cause I'd watch <laughs> That's the, true. Now I'd watch the it. content, and then I'd go on oh, RC, wait, wait. and I'd download it. We do not pirate content. Our content is purchased on DVDs and v VHS tapes and Betamax. <laughs> um, trust us on this one. You would not want to steal a car. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I wouldn't even bother downloading them. I mean, I, I was like, I'm not watching TV anymore. There's no point. The only networks I really watched back then and even now is Discovery Channel. Discovery Channel. But that Actually, now I think about it. 2008, I really started watching Discovery Channel, History Channel. Uh, well, not, dis not History Channel during, like, the middle of the day when they have all, like, the weird tinfoil hat stuff that they put on. Remember back when it was... Ancient aliens! Remember back when it was the Hitler Channel? They have... Uh, they, <laughs> the yeah, that, channel, that's yeah. right. History Channel has, has network decayed twice, and they have a separate network dedicated solely to their first network decay. It's called Military History. Yes, the Military Channel. No, the Military History Channel. And, that, and now it's channel. not called the History Channel anymore. It's just called History. 
because or H two. It's which because is the redheaded stepchild of the history family. But basically, I well, watch. It's, it's like ESPN three, which mm-hmm. is like the weird adopted uh, guy, kid who bleaches his hair white stepchild of the ESPN family, mm-hmm. and that's college sports. I so believe. Y- so yeah, basically. Uh, mm. So it would be Discovery, Cartoon Network, Nickelodeon, which I really stopped watching because they wouldn't play anything other than SpongeBob. It's like, do they have any new ideas? SpongeBob no. got SpongeBob Even took a to the nose dive. The, the the new stuff is like season four was when I really. I mean, I used to be really big into it. I had download all the episodes. Then I bought. Then season four came out, and I bought the actual box set, and I watched it. And like this is not nearly as good. And, and right before that, they had the movie, which is like the high point. The movie was the high point. And to tell you the truth, the movie, the way they did the movie, signaled the downfall of SpongeBob. Well, I liked the movie, but at the same time, it had such a different feel that the current show had. Well, the problem with the movie is that it basically uh, took them off production of the television show for a good two years, where uh, they had finished up season three and they were on hiatus for two years while they were making the movie. And then they're like, okay, now we got to make uh, the SpongeBob television show again. And they came up with season four, where there were some good episodes, but it's like, uh, this isn't working for me anymore. And I stopped watching it. Apparently, they're up to like season whatever. Uh, they're go- uh, SpongeBob. Uh, SpongeBob is quickly becoming our generation's Simpsons, where it's just going to be that show that never goes away, but ever, ever, they, they- ever. They- but here's the thing. Nickelodeon plays so much of the darn thing, you might as well call it the Spongebob Network. No, no, seriously. Let me load up Fios's, uh TV grid. Yeah. By the way, I, I use IO. He uses Fios. So we get we generally get, have the uh, the general gist of the difference between the networks. No one we know uses Comcast, thank God. Comcast isn't available here. I don't care, and I'm happy for it. I know. Because everything I... Look, when a company gets the nickname Crapcast, you know something's bad. Isn't it Comcrap? Com- Capcom? Com- <laughs> <laughs> Mega Man Legends 3, that's a story for another day. Yeah, that'll be podcast episode whatever. Yeah. Let's never do it. Never. And never. It'll be like the AVGN and and Superman 64, or or worse, E.T., where he hints at it every, epi- every other episode, and he's yet to do it. You, Actually, if you want to listen to us screaming in pain for an hour and a half, that will be the Capcom episode. Yeah. So, uh, while this is loading, Cartoon Network basically uh, had a situation on its hand where... Okay, yeah, TV listings. Uh, this is still loading. So, yeah, Cartoon Network had a situation on their hands where basically they had no content... All of their good animation co- had ended, like stuff like Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy, Codename Kids Next Door, and everything. That ended. And the cartoons they brought on weren't nearly as good, and they decided, let's just go to, let's just have a whole block of live action to fill it. And then that was crap. And so they had to, they pretty much realized they had to put their money in animation now. Wait, wait, wait. Is this current TV? Yeah, current Why TV. is Fox running Snow Day? Which, which channel? Fox, Fox, that's movie. Fox movies. Why? Oh, that's why. After that is Fantastic Four, so I know what network that is. Mm-hmm. It's the shit network. It's where <laughs> it's where it's where shows go to die. Yeah, on FiOS, everything from two fifty up. We have uh, Disney, Nickelodeon, Cartoon Network, and uh, the Hub, also known as. If you're watching this movie, you are either a brony or you really like eighties era Transformers. Yeah. Well, the Hub is basically uh, Hasbro the network. Um, yeah, they wanted to create a competitor to Disney Channel, yeah. which is itself a crappy competitor to Nickelodeon, which is itself was at one time better than Cartoon Network until Cartoon Network had a lot had network decayed from. Bo- you know, Cartoon Network was originally what Boomerang was supposed to be, and then they yeah. became awesome. And then they're like, let's make our own content instead. And of now delivering, Boomerang instead is, of selling our souls to Hanna Barbera for ten years. And now Boomerang is Cartoon Network ten years ago. Which yeah. it was still good. I mean, they're play- I mean, like right now, they're playing Johnny Bravo, the Powerpuff Girls, Teen Titans. Those are some good things. But but yeah, uh, Nickelodeon's. Uh, the, um, don't even get me started playing- about what Teen Titans is today in the comics. It went so far downhill. It's the new Fifty Two. They had they had to turn Starfire into a slut. 
Well, she already was kind of like that, but it was much more downplayed. It was more of because she was so naive that yeah. it just kind of turned out that way. But now it's... It's, it's it, like it, fan service, which we'll get to in a moment. But yeah, if I go to like uh, anything from 9 a.m. on on Nickelodeon, SpongeBob SquarePants for an hour, Penguins of Madagascar for oh 30 God. minutes... Not SpongeBob Square Another hour and a half of SpongeBob SquarePants, followed Winx by Club. the Winx Club. They, uh, they actually looped Nickel- back to that Nick- show. Nick- Here's the thing: they put all of their goods, their, all of their other cartoons on Nick Two. It's like Nick Two. It's like Penguins of Madagascar for an hour, Fairly Odd Parents for an hour. Oh wait, no, I think that's just Nick, uh, but time shifted. Now look, look at Nicktoons. Look, look, N- look at their Toons. morning. Monsuno, what? Iron Man. Did they Armored just go? Adventures. Did they just go like anime? This they, is they like want... anime. This is all like faux anime up to Dragon Ball. It's... Dragon. That's Dragon Ball GT, by the way. No, so, that, that no. Here's count, then. Here's the thing with Nicktoons. They they desperately want to be Toonami. No, I'm serious. You go watch Nicktoons. They even have sci-fi styled bumpers. Granted, they don't have, they're not voice actor or anything, but they they, 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 they almost look like third-rate knockoff yeah. Toonami. Well, if they had an animated, uh, an animated narrator, it would probably be SpongeBob. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, imagine, imagine one, one day uh, you're watching Toonami and SpongeBob SquarePants <laughs> walks up to the control panel and talks in Steve Blum's voice. <laughs> no, no, Steve Blum's voice, just like, it, you hear this, you hear his voice... Except in, instead of the normal intro, you hear, who lives in a pineapple under the sea? <laughs> and then Spongebob comes walking through the sliding doors <laughs> and sits in the chair. And that, that, that will and be... And that is the end of television as we know it. No, that is the start of Nicktoons Network Nami. D- don't even say it because you know it's going to happen eventually. So They're yeah. pushing so hard for it. Yeah, and Nickelodeon, they have Winx Club. Remember that was on when that was on Maguzi? <laughs> yeah. Now, <laughs> which, uh, to tell you the truth, uh, Nickelodeon picked up a lot of stuff that Cartoon Network dropped like several years later. Because of the co- be, yeah, it's because of the CN Real crap. They dropped all. They basically dropped all of their licenses. And then Nickelodeon's like picking up the scraps. They're mm-hmm. like, oh, I want. So this. yeah, you have Fairly Odd Parents, iCarly, and then uh, three. Wait, wait a second. Did I just get, did I just skip through Nick? Uh, no, I started at twelve a.m. So now it's three. And now we have SpongeBob SquarePants for two hours. Then we have... Wait, Figure It Out? Yeah, they brought it back. It, except, no, it's not... They brought back Figure It Out as the original show, uh, where it was just reruns, and people, the ratings shot up so high that they actually went out of their way and remade the entire set, are taking current characters from their live-action shows, and are putting them in this show just like they used to. I'm, I am scheduling this on my DVR. Like, uh... The, seriously, uh, mo- like, hashtag, figure it out, it's back, b- I, I heard it actually did really well, uh, and it's, uh, it's, it's doing, re- it's, it did really well when they did the, uh, the reruns, and I haven't actually seen the, is it, it might be premiering tonight, I don't even know. But yeah, I have, I have it set to record tomorrow, but basically, wasn't that supposed to be Nick Gas? And then it, be- then it, then did, it became Nick what? Tunes. After they ate up... After they ate up uh, n- uh, the part of Noggin that wasn't wasn't Nick Jr. and then yeah. Noggin became Nick Jr. They Network. tried. They tried to bring. Uh, I believe I can't remember. There was a news story like. Oh, a by month the way, so. Nick Tunes. It's Dragon Ball Z Kai, and then Dragon Ball GT, and then Super Ninjas, and Dragon Ball Z Kai. So yes, Nickelodeon is the SpongeBob Network. Nick Tunes is the Dragon Ball Z Network. Super Ninjas. Wait, wait, wait. is it? Uh, can you like? Just scroll over and it. And Nick is, is the Zoe 101 and Drake and Josh Network. Except at night, where they compete for Toonami for hashtags. Yeah, when they put... You know, at, at, at night on Nicktoons, they play all that and all the other 90s shows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And And my my friend, who's like... He's uh, at Sutenko or something on Twitter. He's going to really get on me when I mispronounce his Twitter name. But basically... Uh, it's an internet name. You mispronounce... Everything. No one knows my name online. No he, one knows how to pronounce it properly. It's fine. He's basically very big on the whole uh, Toonami reboot. Every every weekend he's tweeting along with it. He's tracking what's tweeting and every, what's trending and everything. And then Nicktoons Network starts up. And then he gets angry. Because Hey Arnold will trend higher than Dead Man Wonderland. <laughs> the, hey the Arnold, is- why aren't you watching Dead Man Wonderland? 
But uh, like, look, look uh, you looked at the uh, looking at the hub. There was like, like a there, 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 family game before night? that. There was, was like there was like a solid two and a half hours of Batman the animated series, which was incredible. Wait, by the wait, way. wait, wait! That one that was good. The good one. The good one. They've been running a lot of. Okay, them. I'm I'm sorry for anyone who's watching the hub for for anything that is in Brony stuff. Granted, if you're they brony, have some if, good, they if have you're some... watching it for My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, that's fine. If you're watching it for anything before Gen Four Ponies, you're an idiot. Yeah, well, to be fair, Transformers is good only if a you're a huge fan of the toys and it, you realize that the show is so bad that it's good. Uh, GI Joe's the same thing, pretty much. Um, the spinoffs are meh for both GI Joe and Transformers. They have new series that they mm-hmm. tried to make, um, and. Uh, you got ponies being ponies uh, and then you got Batman which uh, the animated series uh, they they run the animated series they run um, they also run Batman Beyond mm-hmm. and Batman Beyond was like a little too stark for me like there wasn't enough it, yeah it, it was like, like in the it, future it and looked Robert. like the guy had so much interest in Batman that he drew everything super detailed and then he forgot about the entire show. <laughs> so yeah, uh, getting back on point here. Batman. So okay, yeah. <laughs> basically, Cartoon Network dropped all their licenses, and now they could, now well now what they're trying to do is that they are trying to adhere almost exclusively to the periphery demographic. Like you notice, like for example, Adventure Time. It's not even a TVY seven. It's just TVPG, and they they get away with so much on there. You they if, if this was two thousand and three, it would have been on Adult Swim. Yes. yes. And here's it would, the thing. Actually, yeah. And here's the thing. It would actually fit in with Adult Swim, but in a good way because Adult Swim has always had that little stoner element of people that just want to watch things that are funny but incoherent. So the regular a, show? A, yeah, a regular show or Adventure Time. Those would all fit. Those are things that would have all fit on Adult Swim back when Adult Swim actually cared about animation. Yeah, but now Adult Swim, I don't I I to be fair, Adult Swim is still stuck in the era from when uh, for, it's still stuck in the CN real era where it yeah. doesn't know where it wants to go and it's trying to use it's trying to meld the cartoon content with the uh, with the live action content and they're doing it all wrong let me just say it, it could work they could do live live action co- content it's just we don't want uh, live action content it's still on Cartoon Network's network yeah it, you know what it, if they're going to take the, the night uh, the nighttime section and like like we were talking you were talking about uh, if they do really good in the I next don't, quarter I, I, and a half I, I, they, I don't want Adult Swim to become Nick at Night it make make it like make it like it's own um, well to tell you the truth I want I want it to break off become it's own network and have it do it's own thing so I don't have to watch it at night um, that would be really nice but basically uh, for basically if to, if they hadn't done that April Fool's tsunami thing I think they would be seriously considering canceling Adult Swim in like maybe a year down the road when the when the viewership pretty much dies and they, out and they just they just loop regular show and adventure time overnight <laughs> I, 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 I would which would probably that. be better it, it would be better than uh, some of the content that they have on Adult Swim keep in mind some of the content on Adult Swim isn't bad; it's just mediocre. That's well. That's the real problem. I mean, I mean, Cartoon Network isn't a mediocre network. I mean, they they that's what Boomerang was supposed to be. That's what Cartoon Network was supposed to be before they decided screw that. We're having original content. That then they started Toonami. Then they remade. You know, Toonami didn't start with Tom. It was actually uh, uh, Space. That's one of the Space Ghost characters running his own. Right. I forgot about that. Yeah, I don't. I never actually watched that era, uh, but yeah, actually a lot of stuff on Cartoon Network pretty much came out of the Space Ghost Coast to Coast stuff. It's like this one cartoon which wasn't really that popular, and Cartoon Network says we're going to take all of these characters and they're going to be ba- the basis of all of our various parts of our network. Like they're even, br- I think they're bringing back Cartoon Planet now, and that's another thing which is apparently really uh, getting in on this whole. Let's hide as ma- as much crap as possible, or not even try to hide it anymore. Just they don't need to hide it. They're anymore. going up demographic, basically. That's what's happening. So uh, the, it's, now it's, let's go to Toonami proper. The the the, the, April, the April Fool stuff was obviously put together on a lark. I mean, they had 
the old stuff mixed in at, at the, like I think at like four or five p.m. They they were like, okay, screw it, we'll just play Astro Boy, sixties Astro Boy. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. Him. Uh, I love that. Yeah, I, someone it, actually recorded just the bumpers from that April Fool's thing. It was, it was, it, but to tell you the truth, it was a serious probe to see the reaction. Mm-hmm. And they just figured... Now, now, here's the thing, though. That April Fool's Day was already the funniest because in the morning we had... Uh, Google announced the Google Maps 8-bit. Yes. And it's like they, ha- they have this commercial with this stereotypical Japanese family sitting in front of a Famicom and they're plugging in this cartridge and connecting... And then you hear, like, fax machine noises. <laughs> it's like your modem lot- noises. Mo- modem noises, pretty much. Yeah, you hear the, mo- the modem, it, like, little flashing lights on the side of the cartridge from you <laughs> yeah. plugging in the... It was... It was it was beautiful. And to tell you the truth, uh, knowing Google, they probably have a functional version of that somewhere. That would be funny. If they actually... Like, the Google, the Google April uh, April Fool's archives, they actually have physical copies can of I get, stuff. Can, can I get can I get, a, uh, get some Google Gulp? <laughs> Google Gulp. Or maybe some Google Fiber. Uh, like, they also did, simultaneously, They uh, Google also did the... Uh, uh, a thing with NASCAR where they made uh, they were, they, NASCAR. They, they announced that they were go- they were going to put an autonomous car in NASCAR and if the pilot program did good they would replace all the drivers with autonomous vehicles. <laughs> no, here's the thing that would work. And and because here's the thing with the autonomous vehicles they have to drive normally the first time around to get a video capture and then the software processes it and then it can drive autonomously. Yeah, so all you gotta do is take away that recording f- function and they just act as close as they can to human drivers anyway. Yeah! <laughs> so basically what happens is uh, so uh, that April Fool's are like okay, nothing can top Google Maps 8-bit. It, it, Reddit's it timeline was funny uh some of the other Google stuff was funny. And then, at night, I'm sitting there, and my friend's tweets, Toonami's back on. And I'm like, what? Oh, man. So many hashtags from that. From, like, the... It rippled through the internet so fast. It, like, holy shit, Toonami. Yeah. Where have you been? Exactly. It's like, here's the thing. After Toonami went off, I didn't really bother to watch much anime. I think the last one was like Rose and Mania. I, was, I only watched it because I was curious about the 4chan meme. And it's like I, I, I didn't really bother. And now I'm, I'm actually watching anime again. Because of the new Toonami. And it's good. Mm-hmm. Like it's good stuff. Mostly. Well, Most, we'll get into that. Uh, well, like for, the new content's good. Yeah, like uh... And, and to, be, to be honest, their bad con... Their, well, not their bad content. Their old... Their, "Quote unquote old content that they basically swiped from uh, from Adult Swim Saturday Night lineup, uh, which the is legacy content. Well, yeah, they didn't swipe everything. I think. Uh, well, actually, I think Dorarara finished. That finished up. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they. Uh, it's only a matter of time before they rerun Fully Coolie again, except this time on um, on Toonami because mm-hmm. they re- they reran that series like five six times on mm-hmm. Adult Swim." Uh, which it was a so interesting series. I I, I, it I defied never, explanation. I never got into it. Then again, I watched most of Paranoia Agent, and I ne- I could never understand what it was. There's always that one series that you just you, you just you're like no, no, I watched then, how many episodes, and then I watched through all of Serial Experiments Lane, and I'm like, first of all, how the hell do they know what Xanadu was? <laughs> An obscure, an obscure eighties attempt at hypertext that was overshadowed by Tim Berners Lee in the for and was essentially a vaporware product from the seventies that apparently the guy is still working on, and they reference it in like one ep- one episode where they're explaining the whole backstory and basically the whole plot of it is uh so you know how they're moving to IPv six yeah. Okay, well, spoiler alert in advance if you haven't watched the series, although it's pretty old. IPv7 has a built-in mode, which takes advantage of Schumann resonance in the planet to control everyone's minds. <sighs> okay. <laughs> I, spoiler alert is over. Besides, I don't want... I, I, I didn't really uh, 
enjoy that series so much as I w watch it. I'm like, well, the first six episodes are boring. The second set and the second set of seven episodes is like, what just happened? I don't know what's going on. It, it, it went from boring to insane with no with no intermediary. And then my Wii updated, and I got the updated internet channel. Uh, and then you lost all your uh, all your homebrew stuff because it updated. No, no, this was before homebrew. Remember? Oh, it was. Oh, it was before. Uh, they they I stopped forget updating how, I, I the forget internet how, channel. I forget how far back our the quote unquote next generation consoles, which they still like to call themselves. Two thousand six was when the Xbox three hundred and sixty came out, and it's two thousand twelve now. And the 360 is, at best, is going to launch late 2013. So we're going to have seven years of this console cycle. So yeah, uh, uh, getting back to where we were talking about. The new Toonami, they, there was this whole internet campaign, and now we have uh, this lineup, which kind of looks cobbled together, because there's... First there's Bleach, which is a long-running Shonen series, which they already had licensed. They already had it licensed. Sorry. Then they have Dead Man Wonderland and Castor and Sins. Is that how you pronounce it? Castor and Sins. Cashin. Yeah, Cash Dead Man Wonderland and Castor and Sins, which are both uh, new licenses, new anime. Uh, I I have a feeling that they pretty much scrambled to get the rights rights license from Funimation for that. And then you have. Uh, FMA Brotherhood, which I think they already showed on Adult Swim. Um, I think it's still going. Like it, they, they never finished. No, Brotherhood I, I can't ended. If, the the uh, Full, Full Metal Alchemist manga ended. I, no, I mean I don't I don't remember if they actually finished it on um on Adult Swim. I think uh, they just continued from where they left off. So this is if they didn't loop around already. I I, or, or maybe I didn't they, pay attention to Brotherhood when, to be honest. Or maybe when they they pulled that thing. Remember when they ran out of Dragon Ball Z episodes and they looped through the entire series. Yeah, waiting for the people to produce new stuff. No, I, 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 I it, it's almost like there's like this little program that's going around playing a Dragon Ball Z series episodes in a playlist, and when it when it gets to the last episode, it just loops, and someone forgot to put the new episode in, and now it's playing all the way from the beginning, and no one knows how to change it. Well, Nickelodeon's pretending with that. Like when they had before they got GT going, they looped to Kai like four or five times. You, you mean uh, you mean Nicktoons technically? N N whatever. I, I just find it funny that Nicktoons is essentially Toonami with more Nickelodeon. Yeah, uh, and, and uh, a lot of that, like, a Merame, a and, fake and, anime. Yeah, uh, like, Legend of Korra and all that stuff. I by, the, still, by the way, they, any Toonami fans, please don't feel insulted that I'm comparing Nicktoons to, to it's Toonami. A, it's a good thing, I promise. Sort of. No, I, I, I'm comparing it only in the actual things being shown, not the obvious Toonami aspects. Yeah, not not which, the, which we'll get into. Not the content itself, but the popularity and the success of the no, network no, no, itself. The, no, 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 the content, not the bumpers or anything that made well, Toonami really good. Bumpers, yeah. So basically, uh, after F, they have uh, get Ghost in the Shell standalone comp complex second gig. I, I watched all of the first standalone complex. I never watched second gig. Second gig's all right. I, I liked it. Um, all I know is the that first, like the, the first, first stuff episode was... apparently uh, major sh uh, major bears or uh, boobies for the audience. And, of course. And ever since then, you know what? I, Look, I, I don't call from it... the outfit she was wearing for the entire first series. It's not even a season. It's more like it was a se it was a series that they didn't intend on making a second season. Well, there's and then, one oops. episode where you see some side boob, but in the first season. Yeah, but. Uh, there, there, were, there was a certain audience in Japan that was watching it for that reason. Well, and they, true. They, we'll, we'll get into that, too, because uh, that's kind of what's driving uh, Funimation. But uh, anyway, uh, uh, so uh, second gig, uh, ever since then, I've been, I've been calling it TITS, but spelled capital T, lowercase i, t, <laughs> capital S. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. I like that. And, and, and I actually come up, came up with an amu amusing backronym. Toast in the Shell. <laughs> yeah, I don't call it Ghost in the Shell anymore. I call it Toast in the Shell. Because it abbreviates to taste. This is the second series, oh, series, season, whatever you want to call it. Also it, Electronic Brain Pancake. Uh, <laughs> it was it was good. Um, they did some weird things. Like, they tried to, like, put, like, instead of it being, like, 
the human brain is part of the internet. It was essentially like you just downloaded a digital version of yourself and you ran around in the internet, and it was it was kind of weird, and they kind of it was a weird jump, mm-hmm. but. Uh, well, in a lot of the se- first series, season was great because it had like, it had the it had the politics. It well, had in a lot of these cyberpunk series, uh, ever since like the first real big cyberpunk uh, books like Neuromancer and such, they've always tried to describe the internet as this other world where people jack into it's like no it's a world where I sit at my computer type into a terminal for an hour and bam out pops a website it's uh, the Japan wants to believe that the internet is this big coherent thing, well they got but it it's from, so they got it from 70s and 80s cyberpunk I mean at least with, with, with when it came to the 90s they started contextualizing it like in snow crash they yeah. had the metaverse which is described yeah. as this virtual game but it's more than a game. It's, it's, it's like Second Life. Actually, Second Life was inspired by Snow Crash. Except that Snow Crash's idea was much better than what Second Life turned out to be, which was a glitchy lag fest of glitch. <laughs> and that's putting it lightly. Um, and and the last one they have is Cowboy Bebop, which... Uh, if, if you haven't the- seen most of Cowboy Bebop by now, what is wrong with you? Where have you been for the past... 14? No, sorry, no. No, it's been, it's been, uh, it's closing on, like, 17 years since they uh, started For that. 17 years, I've been sitting at home, uh... I mean, you, you, have, to, you have to have seen some of it, you know, it's I've, like... I've, I've, I haven't. Really? I, it, I am beginning to think I'm unqualified to make this podcast. It, it's, it, it's... <laughs> It's okay. Uh, everyone has that series that you don't talk about but and you I've pretend had, to know. I've despite. had three of that series this podcast episode. It's only been an hour. Look, it, 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 whatever. It's fine. You'll find you'll find that I'll, I I will have many more gaps than you do when uh, when we get farther into this. If we get farther into this, okay. So. And then after three a.m., it's the reruns or the for the West Coast people and such. Yeah. Um, so basically, uh, yeah. So now we have today. We have that in the future. What do we do with Toonami? Since now we're we are the network execs of both uh, Cartoon Network, William Street, Funimation, any other anime dubbing company that's still alive, and every animation company in Japan, and we can make anything happen so that's a pretty good segue and we're almost at the hour mark uh believe me most podcasts last longer than this well, even, I, I, even I, I, the I, unofficial I, tsunami podcast uh, which is uh, bri- which uh, publishes the day after yeah. so uh, we're, we're I, the unofficial pre-tsunami podcast sure uh, but i mean right now we're probably get, not going to get this uploaded anywhere near before tsunami mm-hmm. but uh That'd be a decent idea. We uh we, we group up like in the morning, get the recording done, mm-hmm. uh, get it out, uh, get our uh, predictions in mm-hmm. for the for the show. Yeah, what we we if I can monopolize far, my Saturdays as, and find we'll, something. We'll try. Like, yeah, we'll try as hard as we can to, like, if we have predictions mm-hmm. and stuff, to not, you know, go to the Funimation site and look at the subs, the sub show, which is basically like they have most of the shows that they're releasing, quote unquote, air quotes. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, uh, one of the one of the big constraints which Cartoon Network does that our fantasy uh, picks won't have if we ever get around to making them is that uh, Cartoon Network has to license from anime dubbing houses that are still in existence. And let me tell you, after two thousand six, there was a big drop off where the market turned into a giant smoldering crater. Apparently, Sephiroth may have may have cast Meteor on it. I know. I blame Advent Children. <laughs> I remember that. Was, and what the sad thing is, I know a guy who like his only his only like glimpse into the anime world was Advent Children. Oh, and I feel bad. Oh, that's another thing I haven't I haven't finished. I've just started playing. It's Final Fantasy Seven. <laughs> to be honest, I I really should catch up on Final Fantasy games. Well, not not catch up. No, that would no, take no, way no, too no, long. No, don't don't catch up on the new ones. The old ones are good. Uh, seven is great. From what I've heard, eight is either good or crap, depending on the opinion. Yeah, like uh, this uh, uh, the Spoonie experiment did this huge 
a, a multi-part review where they just rip on every single thing about Final Fantasy VIII. Then they rip on ten and ten two, and eventually they're going to get to thirteen. When, when you have reviews like that, I have to say, when you have reviews like that, you often get you you learn things about the about the game that you probably you, you wouldn't, wouldn't get from most reviews. Well, yeah, because like little stuff that like. You know, like little stuff like the pause menu or something stupid mm-hmm. like that, but you gotta think about it. It's this much... is a Final Fantasy game. You know how many times you're going to be looking at that pause mm-hmm. menu? Yeah, it's one. Of, it's easier. To, it's easier to learn things about it when you're mercilessly tearing it apart because you have to tear things apart anyway. So basically, uh, Cartoon Network has to license from Funimation and. Maybe the bloated corpse of ADV if they ever get out of this lawsuit that they're having with Funimation. Why do I, I just have the feeling that Funimation, they're going to find some agreement how, with Funimation just eating them whole. Like, well, they already they, they already got most of their series. Well, yeah. In fact, that's why they're suing, because that, all, that agreement also made them a creditor, and they're angry that ADV restructured themselves in a really, really stupid manner. Supposedly to get past a very hostile shareholder, I don't know. So, uh, basically, Funimation is the only big people that can sur- that su- can supply them with the licenses to. They're going to be targeting like. Oh, you get into that big point that the, uh, you were talking about the other day with uh, with Cartoon Network and the networks and. Well, think about it this way: Cartoon Network's new demographic for the new Toonami is going to be uh, uh, late teenage, early adult. Uh, well, you can already see it from the amount of violence that they in the two the they only have two new shows right now and the violence is so heavy in the stuff that they're showing. I mean, keep in mind one of them is robots, but well, the well one of them is a post apocalyptic ro- a post apocalyptic robot zombie simulator, and the other one is one where people die. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, to be honest. Uh, I watched last week's Dead Man Wonderland, and I saw the, um... Spoiler alert. The guy, the guy, uh... What, what the... He, he's, suppo- he, he's supposed to be, like, um, the warden. I, I guess the warden? Not, no, not even no, the is the main character. No, uh, the guy who... He, he's pulling all the strings behind mm-hmm. the scenes. He's not quite... He's not the warden, is he? I think... I, I, I don't know. They he's in power of some kind, but he just... It made me realize when, holy shit, this is Super Jail. Like, do you remember that series? I never watched Super Jail. The that t- was right when I was starting to it get... It looks like Super Jail, up. but done so much better. Like, Super Jail... Uh, now we're going to look Super Jail. It, it was... It's terrible. No, on TV tropes, not actual... Oh, watching. okay, okay. Uh, I like, watch 90% of my anime it's like, through TV shows. Except instead of having competitions and stuff like that, it was like every once in a while the warden would hold competitions. Not because that was what the super jail did. It was because that's what the hell he felt like. And yeah. like he and like he they had a recurring cast of inmates that they never named and stuff like that. Yes. But they would die every episode. So yeah, the, the big challenge with Cartoon Network though is that... Uh, if you haven't noticed, a lot of uh, Funimation's output is really fan service heavy shows, and uh, there's kind of a limit to how much nudity you can have on a broadcast network without becoming the adult network okay. that winds up being on the high but, tier pay hold packages. On. Just, just just pause the podcast now. Go to Funimation's website. Look at their catalog. What was what that? Look at their catalog, and it's. It's just fan service. It's a wall of fan service. But I, I see, did, I is, see muscled men without shirts. Um, wasn't there? Th- wasn't there you. hashtag? Not their hashtag. Wasn't there catchphrase for CK Ray boobies for the win? <laughs> I remember that. Why do I remember that? Because TV tropes. I know. Well, yeah, it's like okay, they, one one piece, which that was actually the thing that really made fun, turned Funimation from. From this uh, no name, it, it's a thing that really got Funimation real big fan credit because they just swooped in at the last minute and said, "No, four kids, punch, sock, bam!" And everyone and cheered. Be- the and everyone cheered because they're like, "Who is this guy? I don't care. He's beating up four kids." <laughs> <laughs> and then he steals the license off the Joker. It's like, not today. Wait, he's the potato. <laughs> so yeah, uh, it's yeah. like. But yeah, they have. Wait, they license Axis Powers Italia. Yeah, I have a vendetta with that series because 
I, I I don't like the concept of stereotyping entire nationalities into into a single character. Yeah, into a single character who's supposed to represent a nation state. Okay, now we can have all the war and atrocities being represented by cute chibi anime characters. No, the 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 cute uh like the cute adorable little one is actually a sea land. Which uh, they have flash forwards in the series where they go to UN conferences and stuff like that, where the countries just bicker with each other Ugh. instead of being at what's war. It, why do they do this? And they Wait, have Sea Land who sits in the corner pretending to not to pe- pretending to be a country, but everyone, uh, pretty much e- except for the UK, uh, doesn't recognize its existence at all. And everyone's like, "It's okay. It's tough being a country. You don't want to be one of those things." And, and that, that's like it, it, they want to make that that. That's the cute, like, little country-to-be sort of thing that they wanted to, like, oh, look, it's so cute. But, and then they have the... I don't, I, I don't like, I don't like Hitalia. I don't like the jokes. I don't, it, it's like... To be, to be fair, it, it I, like the, I like the stabs at history that they have, but, like you said, I can't get past... It um, steps over a line. It's like if I had a seri- series about... Uh, it's like there's so much potential for the series to just go and make fun of horrible atrocities that actually happen and actually aren't a laughing matter. And this yeah. is well, I, look at Germany. It uh, the sh- the series itself shows Germany less as the guy who murdered millions of people and more as the guy as he basically prevents. Isn't he? It, like, he prevents. Isn't he like the? He, isn't the, he like he's the Italy's hero? babysitter? Essentially. Isn't, no. it, isn't, isn't Nazi Germany like the hero in this series? No, no. Trust me when I say this. America is the hero. Because all he screams over and over is, I'm the hero! And then he... Get, no, and then but he, isn't, isn't Italy like the main character? And it's Italy's like the, the main character, who uh, is basically like the funny screw-up guy. And he's buddies with... He became buddies with uh, Germany, who was buddies with Japan. Uh... And basically, well, of course, of course, Japan. They, a, they, a Japanese series is going to make themselves look good during World no, War Two. No, believe it or not, they did not pull. Too, they didn't pull many punches when it came to Japan. In fact, they make fun of it. They're like, they're like, we made this. Ser- Germany's like, we made this series of U-boats. How can you help us with this, Japan? He's like, okay, so we're going to miniaturize them, sell them in capsules, and make them in a variety of colors based on the season. This isn't Dragon Ball. <laughs> They're, they're making fun of Japanese marketing, which is essentially make uh, everything colorful and tiny. So, so yeah. yeah they uh, did. There's, there's FMA. Uh, that that goes to show how much, pa- like, there's so much Yeah, Funimation, Funimation owns everything. Essentially, so they, basically, they hold most of the content of Toonami over their head right now. Well, yeah. Uh, great, log me out of the schedule thing. Well, basically, uh, they're kind of limited by... Uh, what Funimation is willing to license and push. And granted, Funimation does a lot of good things, but at the same time, they're very fan service focused to the point that where there are good series that aren't fan service focused, but at the same time, they're adult. And focusing on fan service is, is a bad thing. Remember back in the 90s when violent video games just started out and Mortal Kombat was like, oh, this is a big, extreme, bloody gore series? Ah, oh, the green blood. No, no, not, we're not talking about the SNES version. Oh. <laughs> we're talking about the original the hardcore arcade version with all the blood. Yeah, to tell you the truth, um, there it's, is look, no... There's a there, combo there, where you rip this guy's heart out. It's, it's like this childish uh, this childish expression of power. It's... It, it's... Yeah. It, it's... Um, it was... It was built for... It was built to make the teenage boy who was like, "Oh man, blood and violence this is so cool," and then push it beyond the limits of what well, a human could actually produce in terms of blood. <laughs> well, that's that's what I view what, what Funimation is doing when they when they like when they put heavy emphasis on nothing but fan service, and I'm like, well, look, look, look at the look at the shows be just featured right on there, like the the it's it, look, look what fan service, fan service, fan service. World War Two fan service, <laughs> history <laughs> fan service, and Oran High School host club. Gee, I wonder what that could be. I have no idea what it is actually. All I know is that apparently they're all but shown in. Uh, yeah, I, I, I've obviously heard of it, so it just. Uh, wait, wait, wait a second. Does Funimation's website seriously say in beta? 
I think they left that there since about three years ago but because like, their site sucks so bad. It's a nice looking pretty site, but click on something and you have to just wait and wait and wait for things to happen. And not, it, be, it it makes you feel like you're um, makes you feel like you're on early DSL again on a really mm. uh, flash heavy page. Yeah, it's like, but yeah. Uh, so, uh, if they could get uh, so now we're going into the whole tsunami. Uh, what we would do if we were the heads of every single animation company ever? What would we license? And what would we push on Toonami? And, uh... So... Uh, you have any ideas? Um... Well... Right now, the company that produces it is, uh, in limbo in terms of their... They're, they're all in limbo. No, it, it's like... B Bandai is in limbo right now in terms of how they're the going, how they're going to they're... license and distribute. They well, yeah. they kind of they well, they yeah. have the ability to license it and then it just kind of sits there. They have no distribution methods. Bandai actually actually uh, dropped a license without even uh, translating it or releasing it or anything. I think they had Nichijou or something. And they have a decent amount of content. And the fact that they stopped recently, uh, they they were they weren't they're not huge like anywhere near as big as Funimation. But at the same time, they're large enough that they could have formed, uh, you know. Some form of competition. Mm -hmm. True. And then they they stop licensing things. And here's the thing with any animation company is that if you don't license things, because licenses are time limited, eventually your content will expire and you will have nothing to sell. So if you're not licensing, you are basically con uh, you're doing an exit strategy. Yeah, that's what you're doing. You're, you're leaving the entire. You're leaving that that industry. You're you're pl you're planning for an exit. So, if you don't want to do that, you have to license things. And guess what's the only company that's licensing? Yeah, Funimation. It's like uh, Bandai's not licensing. Genion was dead a while ago. ADV's Corpse is uh, well. The new zombie ADV Section Twenty Three films, or whatever they're calling it, because it's like seven different freaking companies that are all that they split into to uh, apparently to again get rid of this hostile shareholder. And uh, there's Genion, which is dead. And, uh, it's just a giant smoldering crater now, cast by Funimation Roth. So basically, Funimation has the entire market by the balls. So, <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Uh, back to what you were saying about your fantasy tsunami lineup. I want. Look, every once in a while, like everyone remembers, they ran Gundam Wing. Mm hmm. And it was like for a lot of the current Gundam fans, that was what they first saw. Mm hmm. So, it, a lot of those people who were who originally saw that were a little too the. They they are were a little younger than what would be considered today's target audience for Toonami, um, but at the same time they're huge fans. I am a huge fan of Gundam. Yeah, uh, and they so, have recent content that can prove to be very that would be very good broadcast. So long as on, it's not G Gundam. That was so bad it was good at points, and then other points it was it was it ranged from okay to so bad it was now, good. Now here's the thing with G Gundam is that. Uh, the guy who was making it was basically put under all of these stupid production constraints that he did not like. So he was not invested in this series at all. And he basically put... That's the way he pushed it. That's why we have G Gundam, which is just this hilariously stupid... It, 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 yeah, it was bad. So yeah, it's like... But what's funny is you even see, like, there, there are so many... There are errors in the mm -hmm. script... And things like that. That like, if there was any effort put into it, that wouldn't have shown up at all. Yes. Um. It, but yeah, they got uh, who? Uh, what was it? Uh, Annie Mondays. Do you remember that on um? They ran it on the sci-fi. Uh, well, sci-fi channel. Back that was back when was, 
C Y S Y. Sci Fi has its own little uh, decay path. S Y F. Where they were originally just American Sci Fi, and then they well they did two different forms of decay. The first one was they were going to have Sci Fi related anime, which ended up being Gurren Logan. And the second was was they were going to have professional wrestling. And then they decided, let's put on the professional wrestling, cancel the anime, cancel all the good sci-fi, piss off my parents, who, by the way, are huge Star Trek fans. Not huge enough to go to conventions, but they are pretty big Star Trek My dad was a pr- is a pretty big Trekkie, too. Hey, it was, it, it was well, a popular series in the 90s. No, I mean, like, he's still a huge Trekkie. He watches the recent film, like, twice a month. Like, because it, it's it, a, it's like all the recent content that Star Trek has. But it's it, a he's good, obsessed over it. Because it is a good movie, but it's like, okay, Dad, don't, y- y- there's other Star Trek content. Mm. I know, I know, this is the newest bit bit of content you've seen in years that isn't Enterprise. Show you, you know what? Show him Voyager. He'll swear himself off the series. He'll be like, oh, look, Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, have you seen Voyager? Yeah, that was actually my first Star Trek series. Oh great! Now we're talking about Star Trek. This is supposed to be a. We're supposed to be t- uh, okay. Uh, I was talking about okay. A- future Annie topic: Star Trek. A- Annie Mondays, which that was. Um, they showed Gundam Double O, which mm-hmm. was basically the last, like the last in the Gundam cycle, where mm-hmm. they they usually have like they go through a cycle. They have uh, uh, an a- they have their. Um, original video animation where they just show one one mm-hmm. thing that's a couple hours long and then they do several bits of it. Yeah. Uh, and then they have their series which mm-hmm. is, you know, two seasons long possibly with a movie or two at the end. Mm-hmm. Um, this was the series of that last cycle. Yeah. We're, we're currently in the next cycle which instead of having Gundam 00 we have Gundam Age which has been fairly polarizing because it's not actually made uh, along the... Uh, it's not actually made by Sunrise. It's made by the people who... Uh, the animation um, is done by the guys who do Professor Layton. That could actually be interesting. Uh, maybe It, it not definitely for, shows in the animation. Maybe not for a Gundam series, but... If the they com- went out and did their own thing, I... I they, they do have some film... Like I, If I remember correctly, they have short films out already for mm-hmm. Professor Layton. And yeah. they, from what I've heard, they're great. Mm-hmm. And people want more of it, mm-hmm. but I, I don't know what. It was kind of polarizing. People didn't like the first season. They got into the second season and the third mm-hmm. season because essentially they're emulating the original series of Gundam, Zeta Gundam, and Double Zeta with these three. Because it's mm-hmm. they do. It Remember with, when Gundam series were, were were labeled by Greek letter <laughs> and then Roman letter? Turn A. Yes, that's what it's and, called. And then mathematical symbol. Next, we're going to have. Gundam, and then the mathema- and then the alchemical sy- symbol for gold. Don't don't say that. Because and that be, no no, it will be a Gundam series where Ed Elric is piloting no, a steam. Oh, I, I robot. knew you were going to this. <laughs> no, seriously, it would be a crossover between Gundam and Full Metal Alchemist, and it would Al- be terrible. Al- alchemical Gundams. <laughs> yes, one. They, yes, they run on. It's going to be like a Gurren, but then they got like this Gurren Lagann thing where it's essentially powered by the will of the alchemist inside the machine, but because the machine is powerless on its own and it's powered entirely off of your alchemical strength. Yeah, actually, no, it wouldn't be steampunk. It would be like a. But yes, Gundam is what, 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 what I would what suggest. What would be the hit, would be, be before steampunk? I mean, I don't think. Really um. Old. <laughs> um, here, here's the thing Al- Al- Alchemy really died out at, at the same time as Steampunk so you couldn't really have Steampunk Gundams that are powered by Alchemy but I I, I know maybe I, I'm trying to think cause Japan doesn't want to drop Alchemy though like they have like modern stuff with Alchemy and it, it's like it, 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 it's, it, it's it's plot magic it's plot magic yes well you know here's it's, the, the tri- here's it's the tricorder of the anime series uh, Here's the thing with a lot of, of people that, that like to integrate magic elements or uh, sci-fi elements into your show. Unless you're going to use them to actually affect your society and not just paper over it, parts of the plot. It's plot device. Don't use it. It's magical plot device. That's all it is. And, and, and the big, the big uh, symptom of this is when they decide to pull the whole, oh, it's a... Uh, it's a masquerade we're doing where the normal people can't know about the magic. 
because the person writing the series is too lazy to imagine the kinds of uh, havoc that su such a break in physics would have on the real world if it wasn't being covered under a masquerade. And so basically it's, it's a sign of, I don't want to write speculative fiction. <laughs> Which is, by the way, what SF used to stand for. Wait, what is that? The hmm? last one? Uh, oh, I'm, I'm just thumbing through Game Informer. Uh, no, no, the, the retro reviews. Oh. Uh, Next one. Oh, I forgot. They do it every once in a while. What do they review? Oh, oh, it's Wasteland. They're talking about the Wasteland Kickstarter. Nice. So, uh, basically, uh, my, my, my fantasy Toonami lineup, I want more of... I, I, I want more of what drew me into Adult Swim in the first place, which were really, really weird psychological sign-in series that were... Did you watch Evangelion? No, I haven't actually, which is kind of surprising. The last couple I know, the episodes, last episodes are mind are... fuck. And Tang, all I'm gonna say is Tang. <laughs> um, but uh, spoiler alert: NASA. It, it did the same thing to my brain that 2001: A Space Odyssey did to my brain, mm -hmm. and it was like, what? But it I, it definitely was different. Like it wasn't. It wasn't yeah. the same thing. It just had a similar. Effect. I, 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 yeah. I don't. I, maybe not Evangelion because that's an old series. And even though, even though Genion is gonna just keep remaking they had, it, they had the rebuild stuff recently. But yeah, they, they at the same time, it the rebuild stuff. The what, rebuild what, stuff wasn't the psychological aspect nearly as much as the people who complained about the ending being entirely psychological and having no action whatsoever uh -huh. freaked people out to the point where. The series tanked for a while, mm -hmm. and only once it reached cult status did they sit, think, hmm, let's go back, rewrite the ending as if it was action, and call it... Uh, Didn't they do a high school give, AU? Um, but yeah, it, but yeah, anyway, well, I, I, what I want to see is more... Uh, I mean, Dead Man Wonderland costume sins. Those are the kinds of series I want to see. More of that. Now, not not more of those series just being rerun over and over again. I want to see more series like that. You know what sucks? I get this. No, nope. I get game. I get Game Informer the week after E3. The last page is E3 Bingo, where Reggie Phyllis at uh, Reggie. What? How the hell do you pronounce his last name? Phil Reggie Fizami. Fizami. Thank you. I always say it wrong, and it says Reggie Fizami says magic. Uh, Half-Life 3 t-shirts, no Half-Life 3. <laughs> New GTA 5 trailer, which didn't happen, by the way. Footage of family laughing and smiling at TV. Thank you, Nintendo. Um, gameplay, but, gameplay free CG we'll, we'll, trailer, we'll everyone later. gets excited. We'll do that later. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Zanga, Zanga announces original idea. Yeah. Not, that'll never happen. Yeah. So, anyway, uh, so, yeah. If you know I'm, what Toonami needs to do, because uh, Dead Man Wonderland and Catherine Sins, uh, why do I keep pronouncing it that way? It's Catherine Sins. Cashews. Cashew Sins. <laughs> Those series are good, but they're not going to last forever, and they're going to have to license new content, or they're... or they're going to end up like 2008 Toonami where there's nothing to watch. Their yet. initial... This initial bump is a good start for them, but at the same time, now that they have guaranteed themselves at least a decent audience... They need to be looking towards next quarter, mm -hmm. and the mo more importantly, next quarter is where they're going to be. They're going to be trickling out some stuff a little faster than what they are now. Fourth quarter is where they're really going to have to kick it. They they really need a kick in the ass. Yeah, Otherwise, if, they're going to fall on their face, and it's going to be the same if thing. If their lineup is not entirely original original content by then, and by original I mean not a rerun, but newly licensed stuff. I mean even if it's even if you, one of those slots is Bleach. If it's not all to solid be, to be fair, by then, Bleach it's it, they're, they're going to have new stuff. So, well, yeah, Bleach counts as new, even though it's kind of crap. Well, the, the current arc is good enough that I'll actually watch it. Uh, but waiting yeah. for the next show, yeah, like yeah, how every like how everyone watched. Yeah, you know, if you're a guy and you grew up, what like you wanted to watch your Dragon Ball Z, you watched through Sailor Moon because it was on before Actually, Dragon Ball Z. Actually, here's the thing. As a kid, I didn't really like Sailor Moon. I watched through Sailor Moon and Dragon Ball Z so I could watch Reboot. I loved f***ing Reboot. Okay, okay. Yeah, I, I, that is a good... I'm sorry. I'm just reading the, the E3 bingo things mm -hmm. and they're all just making me laugh. 
Because some of them are so bad that they'll never happen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So, what I want is... Uh, well, well, you were saying something interesting the other day about uh, Cartoon Network getting into the... Uh, uh, getting into the getting into the industry, you know, getting their foot in, uh, in terms of uh, actually bringing their own content over from Japan to here. Uh, well, yeah, that's another thing. If Funimation can't produce what what Cartoon Network wants, and there's there's not not much else to go to, they might have to actually open up a division of William Street or something specifically for anime translation. I, if they find that Funimation isn't willing to push as hard as they want to push Toonami, I'm really hoping they want to push Toonami harder than what Funimation will push. Because, I mean, great. don't get me wrong, Funimation is doing everything yeah. right, but at the same time, it's uh, we, we need a broadcast home uh, for tell a, a, mono a monopoly on any industry is... You, you see... You see... You could, you could see through the content, mm -hmm. the the bottleneck that's happening yeah. from content simply because of uh, just the limited number of people who are willing to license mm -hmm. your stuff. But yeah, uh, anyway, it's a matter of, uh, they need, they need, uh, what we need for anime, if we don't want, if we don't want Funimation to become a sm smoldering crater, is that anime needs a broadcast home. Seriously. I mean, granted, and you, not we, the that was the anime network. The an, well, anime network. Well, there's the anime network and the Funimation network. Anime network was ADV. Funimation network was Funimation, and both of them were. Well, no, anime network. Uh, they tore down and turned it into an uh, to an on demand series. Funimation network got dropped by both FiOS and Cablevision within two months of each other. I've noticed that uh, as the show was as the uh, well show. Uh, podcast has been going on. Mm -hmm. We were progressively getting closer and closer to the mic. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, I guess that's us getting into it. Yeah, uh, but basically, uh, fun. But basically, uh, anime needs to broadcast home on cable TV, and Cartoon Network is it, because it's Cartoon Network. It's the only network on cable TV which actually ha says we're playing animation and we're proud of it. Or at least we were, except for that CN real era. Just forget about it and watch your Adventure Time. So I, I really think Adventure Time and like like you were saying, Adventure Time and regular show are like that's Cartoon Network's way of saying sorry. Mm-hmm. It's yeah, it's Adult Swim's way of saying sorry. But basically, oh, Adult Swim. Yeah. This case, so the next thing is Four uh, Chance A Board. I'm looking at you because every time Toonami is on, I go there. In fact, let's go there right now. Boards. Four Chan. Org. A. Viewer discretion advised. D uh, don't worry, it's not video. Okay, so just Control F Toonami. Nothing. It's every single e every single episode. It's it's just look at this fan sub that I have and I'm watching and I'm going to be completely isolated and I'm going to just hope hope that the entire market dies out so it can be my little secret so that I can have sex fantasies with my waifu. Yeah, it's A. Um, uh, CO doesn't really... Actually, no. Uh, second week, CO was actually talking about streams. Gundam! Yeah, there's a Gundam thread on A. But Why are you on A? I know it's anime, but you have an entire board to Gundam, basically. It's called M. True. But basically, the thing with A and CO to a lesser extent is that they don't really talk about the new Toonami. I mean, granted, the new Toonami is getting great. Uh, uh, let me look up look, the, the news. Any, any network has me staying up to 3 a.m. watching it and being awake, paying attention to the plot, and being excited about what's coming up next. They're doing something good there. Toonami rating? Ooh, Toonami rating? Oh, you already read it. Ha, <laughs> I've read it. I see what it, they yeah, did it's, there. Yeah, it's Reddit's Toonami board. Yeah, Twitter is... Yeah, they don't, the, the uh, Reddit Toonami board... Oh, that, that disappoints me. Why did Bleach top the charts? That because it's the me. first thing on, and it, if, for kids that can't stay up past 12, at least they can bo bother to watch Bleach. Or the first but half here, of Here's it. the thing, though. I mean, Dead Man Wonderland got 1.1 mil views. Uh, oh wait, yeah, you're right. And the, the ratings go directly 
to what's it goes no, in he, chronological order. Now here's the thing though about the ratings. Bleach got 1.2 mil views. Uh, Dead Man Wonderland got 1.1 mil views. This is June 2nd, by the way, so it's almost two weeks off because we don't have uh, the uh, last week's numbers won't come in until like Wednesday. But basically, it doesn't go below 500,000 views for 5:30 in the morning. <laughs> Wait, I just realized that you're pulling over a half million views at 5:30 a.m. for a rerun of a rerun of a rerun. No, actually, I can't even count how many times this has been. No, it's looped. a rerun of the uh, of the content from twelve a.m. to three a.m. Oh, right. So it, it is. It, a, it's a rerun of a rerun that's yeah. been reran many times. Heck, even at three o'clock for Bleach, there are eight thirty thousand of you who are willing to watch the same episode of Bleach again, again. because you missed Dead Man, Dead Man Wonderland by accident, and you were like, "Oh, well, I guess I'll watch Bleach," because I walked away to get that popcorn for half an hour. So, and Miss Dead Man Wonderland. Yeah, it's like, it's like Twitter will light up, but I I see a lot of the other parts of the anime community, and they are not lighting up. They're like, uh, you need to support this. I mean, seriously, if Twitter you, definitely is. I mean, you definitely yeah. see tw the Twitter audience lit up about it, mm -hmm. which I'm not sure if that's because Twitter is casuals, but or uh, well, we need cat. You need casuals. Uh, well, look, look if, at Nintendo. If you don't have casuals, Nintendo would be dead right now if there wasn't a casual market yeah because that uh, to be fair nintendo targeted casuals mm -hmm. but at the same time if they didn't have it mm -hmm. it'd be dead they'd be there nintendo would have folded like sega so no they would have folded like 3do <laughs> no 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 Okay, 3DO folded for a different no, reason. No, 3DO but. folded because they tried licensing out their hardware and they had, like, crap loads of revisions that were all different. And <laughs> a steam box. <laughs> what was that? Nothing. Mm hmm. Toonami. Mm, yeah, I'm on their, uh... I'm on the section of the Adult Swim forums for I like how I like how their forums look like something from, uh, when Toonami was initially launched. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you're right. It actually, it's very, does look it's like very it. throwback. Like, this is like the first boards that I've been on. Like this, well, the first boards that I've been on that weren't, you know, four chan. But yeah, uh, like, yeah. oh boy, envision free. What's this? Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's uh, people want to ruin tsunami. <laughs> What's this thread? I I know. I mean, okay, well, I really hate that backdrop. Yeah. Um, blah, 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 action block, hardcore, edgy, blah, blah. Um, this, uh, this is sort of like the same thing where I'm s saying, uh, don't go for the fan service because it'll screw everything over. And, well, they can't really play the fan service -y stuff because, again... No, Japan's fan service stuff has gotten too hardcore for broadcast television in the yeah, U.S. Yeah, again, we need broadcast television that's both... That's both high quality. We, li uh, we live in a country. Content, we live in a country not, not immature. Mature. We live in a country where uh, the Brady Bunch was not allowed to have a toilet in their bathroom because it was considered obscene. Uh, yeah. So you know what? That, that's just standard I, right I, there. I, I, and I that was to... years ago. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I assume they've loosened up a little bit then. I mean, look at all the toilet humor now. But you know, true. But you're not allowed. It, there's a line you can't cross. Uh, and Japan which, has crossed that yeah, significantly. It, 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 there's stuff that won't fly in the U.S. There's stuff that won't fly on broadcast television. Even if I'm it's sure in now. Europe they could broadcast a lot of, like, a decent amount of that stuff. I mean, yeah, but, with a ton of labels yeah, over but, it saying, warning, almost we porn. Don't, we don't want the anime community to become Europe. We want it. We want an anime community in America that's flourishing and to do that, we need uh, someone, a, a system... To do that, we can... need a, a licensing company in Texas. <laughs> okay, <That too>. no. <laughs> but we we do need a, 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 a somewhere where you can just go on your television and watch anime without having to go through, oh, I gotta download this sub, or I gotta go... To tell you the truth, that, is, that was a huge wall for me for mm -hmm. getting back, like, getting really into anime, was that whole... You gotta torrent it. You got it. Well, well, that's a wall for everything. Like, uh, 
Like, no, I mean, like, it was a wall, like, I was sitting, staring at it, I'm like, do I really like, want to torrent it? Do I just want to buy the DVDs? Uh, but I can't find the DVDs anywhere. Do I really want to import it? I don't really want to import like it. It's for, like, for Nintendo, if you want to play Ocarina, Ocarina of Time, they have Ocarina of Time 3D. And if you want to play, like, any of their any of their recent games, that uh, any and almost any of the series, even Fire Emblem now, you can get it in America just fine straight off the shelves. If you're an Earthbound fan, you get to go and pirate a SNES ROM and play it on SNES 9X or BSNES or what have you. And then you get to go and find the Mother 3 translation patch, apply it to Mother 3, pull, run it in VBA or what have you. So yeah, good and, luck with that. And, and, and it's it's like, it's not something that you can go just go out and buy in a store. and you have, it, 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 It's a huge barrier to people when they absolutely have to... Ooh, 